welcome to the Felicity Yarn Studio channel. If you're new here, my name is Zoe. This is where I like to share my making within the fiber arts and the textiles world. And of course, if you're a returning viewer, a big welcome back. I hope that everyone is doing well. It has been quite a while since I sat down and recorded a podcast, kind of one-on-one -on -one video. Um, I think it was back in November was the last time that I recorded. I kind of took some time off in December. Naomi and I did our joint call then. Um, and since then, <laughs> I have had the Rona. <laughs> so... Yeah, I'm kind of still in recovery. I don't know if you can hear any of the like nasal congestion still going on here. Um, I will save some of that for the end and kind of share my experience if you're interested. Um, but yeah, I am doing much better than I was a few weeks ago. Very happy to be on the mend. Um, so that means that I have quite a lot to share with you guys today. So I've gotten a lot of making done in the last like month and a half. And um, yeah, I think that I'm just going to go ahead and dive right in because I have a feeling this might wind up being a long one. <laughs> I don't have any footage of them, but I did wind up finishing the second pair of socks for my niece. I did manage to finish all of my Christmas knitting in time. Um, while we were traveling for Christmas, I finished these socks out of some hand spun yarn. Um, this is a skein of yarn that Naomi, who is my sister, she's the yarn curator, she gifted me this um, a few years ago. And I wanted to make socks with them pretty much from the first time that I saw this skein. I'm really happy with how these turned out. It is about a DK weight yarn, um, but I still went down pretty small on my needles. I think I knit them on a size 2 needle in the end. I just find that going down um, pretty small on needle sizes with hand spun tends to work the best for me. Um, and also this is a Polworth silk blend, so there's no nylon and I figured it wouldn't really hurt for them to be extra dense. But yeah, this is just a vanilla sock. I don't even remember how many stitches I did at this point. I want to say maybe it was only like 54 stitches and I did a German short row heel. And yeah, I basically used every last bit of yarn to make these. I had about a yard left over. Um, so I'm really pleased with how they turned out. Naomi has hinted very heavily that she would like this pair of socks. We shall see if I'm feeling generous enough to gift them to her. <laughs> Let me know down below, you guys, if you think that she is deserving of this pair of socks. <laughs> So speaking of Naomi, she and I were running a knit along last year. It was a steak along um, where we encourage you guys to get a little bit of it adventurous and um, try cutting your knitting. So she and I both knit the Woodlark shawl and she has a video on her channel where we were steaking these on camera. The steak was actually along the top of the shawl here. And I have finished mine. I opted to pick up along, I actually think I picked up along the inside of the shawl. And then I knit about eight rows and I have folded it over. And I did, I did a bind off kind of like if you were doing a welt where you would have your stitch from the knitted flap then you go down in and knit the corresponding stitch below it and knit those two together and then I just kind of did a regular bind off um, from there so I'm really pleased with how this turned out it looks really neat and tidy I did have um, a few ends that were starting to fray and had me a little bit worried from my steak because I only did the four steak stitches that were written in the pattern, um, but I, I managed to go down far enough with this kind of encasement um, to capture all of those. I don't think I'm going to have any problems now that this um, little ending has been done. So yeah, I, I'm really in love with how this shawl looks. It is quite beautiful. 
I know that I have talked <laughs> at length about how the process was not super enjoyable for me with this shawl, um, but I'm in love with the product. It's a really beautiful color work shawl. Um, I don't feel like I've seen very many patterns like this. So I don't know if I mentioned this is by Larka of Fiber Tales. And I used some yarn that I dyed up, just some Highland wool, non-superwash. And I used some yarn from Lobby and May, the Retrosaria base. Um, I believe in the colorway Winterfell. It's a very dark blue navy um, with some hints of green in there. So yeah, I really love how this looks. It grew quite a bit with blocking, which I'm really pleased with because I tend to like nice, big, oversized shawls. So yeah, I finished this in early January, maybe even the end of December, I don't really recall. <laughs> so I haven't had a chance to go out and find a good spot to take some really pretty photos of this because I feel like this deserves a nice photo shoot. And yeah, I might leave this on for a little bit. So the last thing that I have finished in the last few weeks, you guys have not seen for quite a while. Um, I pulled out of the depths. <laughs> um, I pulled out my Triscow and I have completed it. So this is the Triscow by Along Epic Anna on Ravelry. I don't remember her full last name. Anna. Dervo, maybe? I feel like I keep showing the wrong side. I'm not sure which is the front and the back right now. Um, I did wear this over Christmas. I finished it before Christmas. Um, basically, I was at the point when I pulled this out of hibernation where I just needed to do like an inch and the hem at the bottom here and the sleeves. So it really took me no time at all to whip this out. This is in one of my colorways in mellow yellow, but these skeins came out not quite so mellow, so I decided to keep them for myself um, and make this sweater. So yeah, I did hold sock yarn and the mohair silk together to get that nice um, cozy, fuzzy base. And I'm, again, super pleased with how this turned out. I actually really like the fit of this as well. And um, again, I just haven't had a chance to go out and do a little photo shoot and get some cute photos of me wearing this yet. So I would like to do that in the coming weeks um, while it's still cold enough here to warrant wearing a mohair sweater. <laughs> the fit is really nice. I did only do about 15 inches for the body from underneath the sleeves. Normally I think I do about 17 inches. I like something a little bit longer. So for me it's cropped. <laughs> So yeah, it's a really flattering shape and I'm kind of considering making another one. Um, we shall see. Maybe one without the mohair or for something different. So yeah, once I finally, you know, buckled down and pulled this out, um, the sleeves took no time to finish up and I'm tickled to death to have this beautiful eye searing sweater done. <laughs> So that's it for my finished objects. I do have quite a few whips to share with you guys as well. I think the first one that I'm gonna pull out here is again, something that is gonna seem like is completely out of the blue, but <laughs> I have started finally my Jupiter crop out of the hand spun yarn that I was spinning um, last year. That feels weird to say. <laughs> But I have made some significant progress on this. I'm really, really happy with how this is working up. I have obviously gotten down far enough to separate for the sleeves. And I'm making some good progress on the body. So I've gotten about two or three inches done past the sleeve separation at this point. I'm on kind of a small cable needle here, so it's a little scrunched up. So I'm at the point where you just kind of keep repeating the same chart until you have a length that you are happy with. So I think I'm going to do a couple of repeats and try this on and see where it is falling on me. 
Um, right now, I think it would just barely cover my bust. So again, it's written as a crop top, and we'll see how far I go with the body on this. I should have plenty of yarn to make it um, a little bit longer than what the pattern calls for. I have all of this of the main color, and then this is the color that the chart is in right now left. And I have plenty of the other three colors left over as well in case I want to, you know, adapt some of the other parts of the chart at the bottom there, which I've seen on a few Ravelry project pages, and I really enjoy how that looks. The other thing that I'm kind of contemplating is if I want to just write the sleeves as they are written in the pattern, and they're kind of like, they come to the top of the elbow there, um, which I do like. My only thing is with it being such a thick sweater with there being color work all over, it's basically double layered. Um, it feels more intuitive to me to have long sleeves with a, a garment this heavy, but at the same time, I'm kind of like, the sleeves will just take me like a day to get done. <laughs> so maybe I should just go with the way that it is written. I always feel like I have grand plans to alter patterns and then when I get into knitting them I'm like let me just follow the directions because the directions are there for a reason. <laughs> so yeah we shall see but I'm really pleased with how quickly this is working up. So again this is a fiber that I dyed up for a specific palette that I had in mind based off of a picture that I found online. Um, the only one that I didn't dye up is this kind of beigey cream color, and that is one of the John Arben colorways, um, the beautiful ones, I believe. But the rest of this um, is just kind of all one of a kind that I decided to dye up and then spin up, and it's all merino, except for the John, John Arben is Coriadale, which I still think is like a cross of merino. Anyway... She's coming right along. I'm really pleased with this. Um, for a while there, the color work was really like capturing me. <laughs> I got really sucked into it. Um, but since then, I'm kind of like getting drawn into other things. But last night I sat down and I got sucked back into it. So yeah, I would really love to have this finished by the next time I record, uh, but I'm not putting any pressure on myself necessarily. I think it just also works up really quickly because my yarn is more of a DK weight, a light DK, and the pattern calls for a sport weight. And I think I did go up a needle size from what it recommended. I think I'm knitting mine on size sevens, maybe. I can verify that for you. Just kidding, they're size sixes or four millimeter needles. So. Yeah, so again, really happy with my Jupiter crop. Um, oh yeah, and I did go ahead and I started sewing in all of my ends um, here on the body so that I would not be left with a gazillion ends when I'm done. So I need to go back and do that on the second set of color work. So while we're talking about projects out of hand spun, um, the next thing that I wanted to share with you guys is I started knitting a pair of socks out of the skein of yarn that I spun from a braid by Wound Up Fiber Arts. I've knit the whole first sock and I am waiting to put in my heel here. Um, this is in the colorway Ghosting and I did a toe up sock. Um, this skein came out a little bit thicker than what I would have liked for sock yarn. I mean it's not that it's unusable or anything, it's just closer to um, a sport weight versus like a fingering weight. So I wound up doing a 60 stitch sock. There were 30 on each side of the needle. Um, I did toe up. I did one at a time because um, me and Naomi, I think Naomi's part of this, <laughs> but my mom and the aunties all had questions about knitting socks and knitting heels. So we're all kind of doing a little bit of an informal sock along in our little group chat 
and um, we decided that the afterthought heel would probably be the simplest one to tackle first. So I've got my sock all knit up and my piece of waist yarn in there for us to do our afterthought heel. Um, we were going to do a joint call last weekend, but obviously <laughs> last weekend I felt like I was just ready to crawl up in a hole and not die, but I felt pretty awful. So I have since finished my sock and I think that some of them are still like right around here. So I've debated if I want to go ahead and just cast on and try to power through my next sock and then I can do my heels two at a time. Um, we'll see, but I really, really love how this yarn is working up. Um, again, it's just a lovely blend of kind of like lavenders and grays with those pops of like rusty orange in there. Um, this was a really quick spin for me when I did it. And I have, again, started another of her braids for another sock spin. I'm kind of really loving hand spun socks at the moment. And again, since this is hand spun and it's a little bit of a heavier weight, I am using my one and a half needles, which are 2.5 millimeters. So a little bit heavier than what I would normally knit socks on, but that just means that they are working up very quickly. And um, as far as my bind off up here went, I actually, I got a little bit extra and I decided to do a tubular bind off um, just to see what it was like on a sock. So it's still pretty good and stretchy. Um, we'll see how it fits and wears, but it does look really nice on the edge of the sock there. So if you guys have been around for a while, you'll know that I have... <laughs> I have trashed the um, tubular bind off in the past, but I'm kind of becoming a fan of it. So growth, it's a new year. I'm opening my mind to new possibilities. <laughs> All right, I'm getting a little bit warm, so I'm gonna take this off. Next up, again, is a, another new cast on. <laughs> um, I feel like everything except for what I have next, has all been new cast-ons. If you guys have seen my previous video, which was my Dye Studio vlog, then this might look a little bit familiar. I have cast on the Cozy Classic Light by Jesse Mae Martinson, and this is in the colorway that I dyed up in that video. Again, it's pretty scrunched up, but I love this thing. It is working up so beautifully. Um, this colorway is just really gorgeous, um, really subtle and soft and kind of delicate. Um, this is the colorway that I dyed up called Woman at the Loom based on a painting um, that I chose for the advent calendars from last year. I'm really looking forward to recreating a couple more colorways from the advent calendars. So yeah, I really wanted something basic. This is a basic top-down raglan with some nice kind of feminine, um, delicate details, which I think work really well with this colorway. Um, it does have the tubular cast on for the neck. And then the way that the increases are worked, you get this really nice kind of lifted effect there. Um, I really like how those are working up. So yeah, I think that the yarn plays really nicely with this pattern. And I mentioned in the vlog that I wanted to um, not replace, but have another just kind of basic raglan that I can put on um, for knocking around the house or going out and running errands. The one that I made out of a DK weight yarn I wear a lot and this is going to be a little bit lighter because it is made out of sock yarn and um, yeah I feel like this is one that I'll probably wear out to like the grocery store more whereas my DK weight one will be one that I wear around the house a little bit more but I'm really pleased with how this is working up. 
Um, I am alternating skeins using the hel helical <laughs> method and I'm I think I'm at the point where I'm ready to separate for the sleeves. I might have a couple more increases to go. Um, but since I have been sick, I haven't pulled this one out to work on it, mostly because I didn't have the brain space to do the separating for the sleeves. Um, but also, I really love this so much that I kind of didn't want the taint of sickness, the sick experience <laughs> associated with it. Um, I know that's crazy, but um, I love this so much that I'm really looking forward to getting back into working on this once I'm feeling 100%, which I'm at like 80% today. So yeah, I, I can feel myself inching towards getting back into this project again as well. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to having this for my wardrobe. I would say if you are looking for a basic raglan pullover, this is a really great option also. Um, the other one that I did but was by Hoki Locatelli, and of course her patterns are always written really well. But this is my first um, Jessie Mae Martinson design. She really goes into a lot of detail and provides links to videos and, you know, provides a lot of information, you know, if you feel like you really want a very detailed, um, pattern versus like this is a very similar design and this one is free versus a paid for pattern um, but there's not quite as many instructions and that's okay too um, I would just maybe suggest if you're a beginner maybe look at the cozy classic light or even if you're a beginner and you're very adventurous, you know, the Triscow, not saying that it was poorly written or anything like that. I'm just saying there's a lot more information and kind of handholding if that's what you're looking for as far as comparing, you know, basic raglan kind of patterns. So up next, I have my Northeasterly blanket. I am doing the crochet version of the Northeasterly blanket. I have completed um, all three columns here, <laughs> which doesn't seem like a whole lot, but it is quite a bit of crochet. It has eaten up quite a bit of yarn so far. I thought that I was going to have, you know, just tons and tons of yarn for this project. And I do still have like an entire tote bag full of yarn here, but I have started um, pulling some single scenes from my stash to supplement this. I think that's the way it goes. And I have been using some of my minis from my Spectrum Advent Calendar. That's what this color here is. And yeah, I'm really enjoying working on this. This is kind of what I was gravitating towards um, while I was feeling under the weather when I felt like I could actually do something. Um, this was about the extent of what I was able to do. And that's another spectrum color here. There, the blue and green speckles, and this bright pink. So I'm really pleased with how this is working up. I wasn't planning on including quite as many neons, shocker. <laughs> um, but just based off of, you know, the size and how it's all working up, I'm really okay with it now. I think it's not going to dominate the blanket necessarily. Um, but yeah, I, my goal is just kind of to go column by column and not really race through this. Um, first of all, I think I'm going to have to finish some more things so I can have some more scraps to throw at this. Uh, but also, you know, there's no race. It's a blanket. Um, I feel like I tend to bite off a lot more than I can chew as far as blankets go, but I'm really pleased with how this is working up. It does kind of curl up quite a bit, but I think with blocking and adding, you know, a couple more sections, it's really going to start to lay flat. So yeah, I'm really pleased with how this is working up. Not a whole lot to say about it other than um, the pattern is by Harbor Crochet. Um, she worked with Ellie of Skinanigans, who wrote the knitting version of this pattern. And yeah, I'm just going to keep chugging right along with this one. So moving on into spinning, um, I know that Naomi and I have both talked about we want to 
explore more um, sheep breeds this year in our spinning and <laughs> she and I both bought a braid from the same dyer who has some um, baby doll south down and um, we both decided to spin this <laughs> as our first one and um, after after looking at the braid I decided I wanted to do a three ply fractal I knew that she was doing a fractal, but I didn't know she was doing a three ply. So <laughs> unbeknowingly, we did basically the exact same thing. Um, we did have different colorways, but this is the skein that I um, spun up and I'm so in love with how this looks. It's really, really beautiful. This was a lot of fun to spin. Um, the baby doll uh, South Down is, I think it was around 28 microns. So it doesn't feel itchy at all around my neck. It's a wee bit prickly on my elbow, but not like unbearable by any means. It's not nearly as prickly as my stalactites out of the Heberdian wool. Um, but yeah, I decided to do this as a three ply because the baby doll South Down, I can't ever remember which one comes first, South Down or baby doll. I think it's baby doll. <laughs> Um, it is known for being a good wool for sock yarn. So again, that's why I did the three ply. I figured I'm really enjoying hand spun socks. So that is what this will probably get turned into. Um, it is known for not felting when it's wet, which I thought was really interesting um, because obviously most yarn, most non superwash yarn will do that. Now I will say when I sat down, I just kind of started going into my default short forward worsted spin. And um, after going back onto the dyer's site, I think I forgot to mention it's Apothefairy. Um, she has a little blurb up there about how this yarn does really well with woolen spinning. So um, I may have bought a second braid <laughs> um, to try some woolen spinning with this breed as well. And I was kind of thinking, since I'm kind of doing this really informally as far as my breed study, I'd like to maybe experiment with doing woolen spinning versus worsted spinning and kind of seeing the differences and how that works up with the wool as well. So yeah, I bought a second braid. Um, hang on, I can grab it. So this is the other braid that I got. Um, this is called Baby Doll South Town. That is what it is. Anyway, I think this colorway was called like Foxy or something like that. Maybe this one is like algae or something. I don't remember off the top of my head. But um, this one was dyed in a repeating colorway pattern. So it went from like green, brown, white, green, brown, white. So that, that was the other reason that made me decide to do the fractal spin. I don't know if this one repeats like that. I don't think that it does, but I'm not sure because I haven't really opened this up. So I'm looking forward to doing a woolen spin with this just to see how differently it spins up and, you know, potentially knit them both up and see how differently they knit up as well. If I do a woolen spin, I'm probably not going to do a sock yarn necessarily. Um, maybe I'll do a hat or something out of this so we'll see I'm also not really going to put too much pressure on myself as far as the breed study goes to you know absolutely get stuff done all in one month um like I'll get to knitting this whenever I get to it and um like yeah I'm not worried about spinning these back to back I have at least been jotting down some notes in a notebook while I spin these um, for my own personal reference. I'm not trying to like school y'all on breeds of sheep. Unless that's something that you're interested in. <laughs> if you are, drop me a comment down below and let me know what you think. So yeah, I'm really pleased with how this turned out. Um, it's a very bouncy, springy fiber. And yeah, I'm kind of itching to cast these on for socks as well. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about with spinning is 
um, Gemma from the Gemma B Makes podcast, she contacted Naomi and I to ask if we wanted to join her in a little informal kind of spin along for the month of January, which was called Spinuary. So that was really cute. Um, so of course she and I decided to join along and I was doing really well getting a little bit of spinning done every day until the Rona hit. <laughs> um, I tried to spin one day while I was not feeling the greatest and it like zapped all of my energy trying to sit there and treadle and you know move my arms and I was like wow that was a major clue that something was seriously wrong. I was spinning this bat first when I got sick. Um, this is from uh, this is from Republic of Wool and this is the colorway is called Little Miss Sunshine and it was a really beautiful bat with the kind of peaches and oranges and greens. Um, it does have some silk noil and Angelina sparkle in there. I'm not normally a big knitter of sparkles <laughs> so I'm always hesitant to buy bats with sparkle in them. I kind of tend to stay away from them. There wasn't a ton of sparkle in this, so that was kind of nice. But it is what it is. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna make with this in the end. I'm not gonna let the sparkle detract too much for me. But I did do woolen spinning for this bat. Because of the way that the fiber is prepped for bats, they make for better woolen spinning is my understanding because the fibers are all going in a bunch of different directions. You're trying to still keep um, some of the air in the fiber as you're spinning. So it made for spinning this as a different experience for me. So I was probably a good three quarters of the way through the bat when I started not feeling well. And I wound up, you know, spinning that last little bit. And then since this is Targi, I actually had some plain white Targi in my stash as well. This bat was about three ounces and this Targi I had split, it was originally four ounces and I had split them into one ounce pieces um, when I was attempting to do some um, kind of sample spinning when I had watched the Craftsy class on spinning worsted to woolen way back in like May of last year. Um, I just never got around to doing that. So I decided since this was about three ounces and this was about three ounces, it would be the perfect amount to spin and then ply together. So I'll have a full kind of barber pulled skein when it is all said and done. So I should have about a six ounce skein. But yeah, this was combed top. Um, and since I spun the other single, uh, worst woolen spun <laughs> I decided to spin this from the fold which was a new experience for me so that's kind of faux woolen spun based off of what I learned in that craftsy class so I'm really pleased with how these singles worked up um, they're a lot more even than I was expecting them I'm kind of getting the hang of spinning an even woolen spun for the most part I mean there's still a few kind of thick and thin spots in there and I'm thinking I'm probably going to wind up with a heavy DK to worsted yarn when this is done. Um, so yeah, I am just resting these singles right now and I will get to plying them in the next few days. In the meantime, I have started another sock spin with another braid from Wound Up Fiber Arts in the sandstone colorway. If you remember back when I spun the ghosting, or right before I spun the ghosting braid, I had mentioned not knowing which one of those two braids I wanted to spin at the time. So I just decided since that one was already pulled out that I was going to start that for my next sock spin. So I didn't pull it off of the wheel because I like literally started last night and there's barely anything to speak of. Um, so I'll probably share more of that for next time with you guys. Whenever I knit the hand spun socks, I'm always like, ooh, I wanna go and spin another braid of hand spun for socks. 
So I have one last project that I want to share with you guys and it's not knitting or yarn related. Um, I am trying my hand at something new. I fell in love with these embroidery thread journals that I saw on some Facebook groups um, last year where basically you pick an icon or something throughout your day that really encapsulates that day and embroider it onto this big 12 inch hoop. Um, I have done one or two little embroidery kits, very basic, very simple, and I've done some cross stitching, but not a lot of embroidery. And it's always been something that I'd like to get more into. So I decided to dive right in because that's what I do. <laughs> and I have started my very own kind of thread journal here for 2021. Now, a lot of people are doing just one kind of icon or thing from the day that really that's most memorable for them. Um, I am kind of keeping a running list on my phone and I'll jot down two or three things from the day and then I'm going back and on Sundays I'm sitting down and kind of picking the biggest highlights. If more than one thing for the day fits, then that's what I'm embroidering on here. So yeah, I've got my little COVID, I've got the political climate <laughs> on here, um, some other things, you know, that are personal and memorable to me. So I'm really enjoying this and kind of sitting down one day a week and recapping and going through and stitching these things on here. I decided to do the aviators <laughs> for Biden yesterday for the inauguration and the string of pearls for Kamala Harris. And of course I had to do um, Bernie's mittens since they kind of stole the show. It's really turning into a nice kind of meta <laughs> crafting project because I'm documenting my spinuary on here. I will, you know, take a little piece of my Targi once I'm done and kind of stitch it on here. Maybe even the new skein of sock yarn that I'm doing. Um, I'm kind of documenting my knitting projects as they come up too. So I did my little northeasterly blanket and my sock. And yeah, this is just kind of a really fun way to sit down and do something a little different. It's a little less structured than a lot of the knitting and even some of the spinning that I'm doing. So I'm really enjoying kind of the freeform aspect of it. I have watched a few craftsy classes to kind of get some ideas of the basics and whatnot. Um, I do need to go through and kind of stitch in the rest of my months here. Um, but yeah, this is just something that is really fun and I might not talk about it on every podcast, maybe like once a month, I'll kind of update you guys on where I'm at with this embroidery hoop. Um, some of the people recommended, um, doing it on a smaller, like working on each section with a smaller hoop, which I think I need to go out and get because this is just kind of a little bit awkward and a little weird in my hands. So I don't know if I have any uh, embroidery people who watch the podcast as well, if you've got any kind of tips or tricks. I did my first French knots last night. Yeah, so that is that. I hope that you guys will enjoy seeing this grow with me throughout the year. So that is it for the yarny and making aspect of things. Um, if that's what you're here for and you don't want to stick around, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, yeah, I have to say that I am feeling much better. Jason got sick as well. We are like 99% sure that it was someone at work where, who he caught it from. Um, I think that because he was at work and they were wearing masks, he got exposed, a lesser exposure than when he came home and, you know, we just hang out without masks at home because we're home. <laughs> so I got sicker than he did because he had some protection at least while he was exposed. Um, yeah, I had fever and chills. I am just now getting my sense of taste and smell back. Thank goodness. 
because that was really depressing. <laughs> um, unexpectedly, that was a really weird side effect to have to deal with. Um, again, I'm still pretty congested, um, but that seems to be moving out of my system as well. I'm probably on like day 10 or 12 at this point, and some days I have a lot of energy and some days I don't. So actually I would say most days I don't have a lot of energy. So um, he is feeling a lot better as well. Jason is, he has been working from home for the last week or so, longer than that, the last almost two weeks now. We are almost up with our full like 10 day quarantine since our positive test. And yeah, uh, this is no joke you guys. <laughs> um, wear your mask, wash your hands, socially distance. Um, you know, we did all of the right things and yet we still wound up getting sick. So that's just my little tangent that I had to go on there. Um, I hope that none of you catch this because it's pretty crappy. I have to say I'm really grateful. Um, my dad actually wound up getting the vaccine a couple of days ago or got his first dose at least of the vaccine. So that's really nice reassuring thing and I hope that the rest of us can you know get that quickly as well I don't have much else that I can think about I think this is probably long enough as it is um oh the one thing that I forgot to mention is Naomi and I have still <laughs> we've not gotten a chance to draw winners for the steak along just yet so I think she and I are going to try to coordinate over the weekend and maybe do a Skype call and announce the winners for that. So yeah, I'm going to talk to her and get that straightened out. But that is it. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you for supporting me in the channel. Don't forget to like and comment and subscribe and all that good stuff. <laughs> um, hopefully I will be back a lot sooner with my next video. And yeah, thanks for joining me. I will see you guys again soon. Bye.